enemies, uh, Frank Moss's friends. Uh, and it's amazing uh, in, in the story, the uh, testimony of one great individual uh, that was a, a, a preacher uh, in the local church in Eaton, that he had the guts to stand by Frank Moss, risk his job, his family, his reputation, and his church to stand by a Christian man that was right. Uh, which, you know, this, this is, it's an amazing thing. And, you know, chickens come home to roost that I have talked uh, on several times in, on talk radio. I guess really the main thing why people love this book is it, it lets you think about choices. What would you do if a friend of yours was falsely accused? Would you believe what the cops tell you? Or would you take the stand that that's my friend and I'm going to stand by his side? And that's really the choices that has to be made in Chickens Come Home to Roost. You know, uh, uh, a lot of reviews has come out on the book. Uh, some of them uh, say that I'm the worst writer that ever lived. Uh, how dare I expose this story? Uh, you know, uh, I write like a little boy. Uh, you know, <laughs> it just really have attacked me on a lot of different areas. And I would res- I respond to them by saying, you know, I- I'm not like my friend uh, Mr. Grisham that has a staff of 100 people at Doubleday. Uh, Chickens Come Home to Roost was the last chance I had to expose this story. It took every cent that I possibly had. And with the help of friends and family and support, Chickens Come Home to Roost came off the press, uh, unlike what the law enforcement uh, wanted this, this book never to see the light of day. And matter of fact, I, I think someone in, in Eaton or Putnam County had, had, had uncovered uh, uh, some of the documents where the, the lawyer and the GDI man had, had, had uh, sued me for, for two hundred thousand dollars on this again a fake judgment uh, to stop publication of this book. Uh, and I think in, in one part of this, uh, they, they say that uh, uh, Doris Anthony uh, accuses uh, uh, me of, of uh, making a statement that she dated a black man in California. And here you know, my statement is. What's wrong? Is a black man not worthy to be dated? Uh, is, is a black man uh, inferior uh, in, in the law enforcement and lawyers and, and judges in that county? Uh, you tell me. And then they come to me as a white man and sue me uh, for a statement that she made to me. I mean, just amazing justice in that county. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, like I say, the book, uh, some of the reviews have been just really horrible on it. And then a lot of reviews... Uh, say that, thank goodness that David Moreland had the courage and the guts to tell the story uh, and not be a chicken and run away. Uh, and I assure you that David Moreland does have a lot of courage, and he told the story. And, and again, the story is probably uh, 98% absolutely true, and the rest is exaggerated for an entertainment-type purposes. Uh, but you'll just have to make your own, own judgment on that. Uh, but again, it was uh, uh, to just get this, per- this book off the, the press was an amazing undertaking, and you would not believe the people that had to come together to even make it happen. And sure, there's some uh, typos in the book. Uh, there's things that's not perfect in it, but it's the best that we possibly could do with the resources that we had. But you know, the thing that I take pride in knowing, um, I guess being an author, any time that I walk into a, a Barnes & Noble or a bookstore or a library, and I look at all those books on the shelves. I just think about all of those individual stories that lie on those shelves and that was told. The, the human suffering, the human sacrifice that went into those books, the rejection, uh, every which way you could think of. And Chickens Come Home to Roost exemplifies that. Uh, in the book, Frank Moss had no rights whatsoever. Uh, all of his money was taken away. He was bankrupted. Uh, he was almost like a, a modern-day Job when everything was gone. What do you have left? Either you can become the monster that your enemies were to you, or you can forgive your enemies and move on. And Frank Miles felt like the best way he could do to get back at his enemies, I guess, uh, is to write this novel and tell this story where all would know, not only in Eatonton and Putnam County, of the injustices that he endured, but the injustices across America that we hear about on the TV today in Los Angeles and New York of this cop brutality and cop fabrication of facts. And it must be stopped. You know, we're dealing almost with a modern-day Gestapo today, and it's scary. It is just absolutely frightening. I know some of the articles that I have written uh, for the Atlanta Jewish Times uh, and, and several publications like that, I'm non-Jewish, but uh, a lot of my friends are Jewish. And uh, uh, I know when we would talk, uh, I had a chance to hear a Holocaust survivor one time, and he said the greatest fear that he had in America today Day was these uh, wolves in lambs' clothing, uh, these people that pretend something that they they are not, and uh, especially in the story of chickens come home to roost. Uh, you know, we, we discussed this: uh, the, the policeman, 
that you, you thought when you were a child was your friend that you could go to if, if you had a problem or something. And my mother used to tell my brothers and I this, that uh, the, the policeman is there to help you and, and, and not to hurt you. But in today, in the 21st century in America, it appears that the policeman is there to fabricate or possibly kill or whatever that he wants to do because he has a power of that gun on his side and he can twist that Constitution any way that he sees fit. And if chickens come home to roost, I think that's why the thing has been so successful is we have exposed this, not only in, in the Eatonton, in Putnam County, in, in, in Georgia level, but uh, I think uh, as reviewers take a really serious look at this book, um, I, I think uh, uh, you know our success is, is, will just continue. I appreciate so much everyone that has purchased this book. I appreciate the calls that I have received. I appreciate the negative comments, and I appreciate the positive comments. Uh, like I say, the book has been a tremendous undertaking, a tremendous risk on my part. But I felt this story must be told. And as one lady uh, called me the other day, she said, you won't believe how many people you have helped. And uh, that was my purpose in this book. is not a revenge or a hateful book or to bash my enemies, but to expose this story where good, innocent, law-abiding citizens in black and white, uh, poor, middle class, whatever your situation, would not be brutalized by these people that wear a tin badge or have a law degree hanging in their, their office. Uh, I appreciate again uh, the time on this tape. Uh, if you would wish to order the book, uh, the local area in Eatonton and Putnam County and in Georgia is cover to cover books. Uh, they're on, uh, I think, Athens Highway in Madison, Georgia. Uh, they carry chickens come home to roost there. Uh, of course, you can go to Barnes and Noble, order the book. Uh, if it's not on the shelves, uh, Amazon.com, you can order the book through them. And, of course, you can call me direct, uh, David Moreland, M-O-R-E-L-E-N-D, at area code 520-320-7517. And I'd be glad uh, to, to send you a, an autographed copy, uh, you know, if you would like to contact me or, or discuss it. Let me know uh, your thinking of the book, if you have read it, uh, if you liked it or if you hated it. I'm open to all comments and suggestions on it. Uh, I just really appreciate this time again. Uh, any way that I possibly can be of help, uh, please let me know. Thank you and have a wonderful day.